Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has promised to annex Israeli settlements inside the Palestinian West Bank, starting from the Jordan Valley. But what is an Israeli settlement and why does it matter so much? Now, the settlement is a town or a village inhabited exclusively by Israeli Jewish communities and located inside Palestinian territories occupied by the Israeli forces after the 1967 Arab-Israeli war. Half a million Israelis live in 130 settlements, including inside East Jerusalem, which Palestinians consider as their capital city. Heavily guarded checkpoints prevent Palestinians from access to the settlements, which are often connected by roads where Palestinians are not allowed. Now, what does the international community say about Israeli settlements? Several UNSC resolutions address the topic, and the last being the resolution 2334 of 2016. The UN has repeatedly ruled that Israeli settlements are illegal under international law. Establishing settlements on land won after a war violates the Fourth Geneva Convention, which says that the occupying power shall not deport or transfer parts of its own civilian population to the territory it occupies, unquote. Now, Israel has always rejected accusations. It says that there has not been any planned transfer of civilians and that the settlements were built on land historically inhabited by Jews. Tel Aviv refuses to consider the West Bank as occupied. Instead, it calls it a disputed land. Now, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been an architect of such policy throughout his political career. Over the last decades, the Israeli government supported a continuous expansion of settlements by giving economic benefits and incentives to those willing to relocate. Palestinians accused the settlers of illegal occupation of land and homes they once inhabited and for which they still have keys and property certificates. U.S. President Donald Trump has sacked National Security Advisor John Bolton, saying that he disagreed with many of John Bolton's suggestions. Now, Trump took to Twitter to make this announcement. His tweet read, and I quote, I informed John Bolton last night that his services are no longer needed at the White House. I disagreed strongly with many of his suggestions, as did others in the administration, and therefore I asked John for his resignation, which was given to me this morning. I thank John very much for his service. I will be naming a new national security advisor next week, unquote. Minutes after Trump's tweet, John Bolton took to Twitter and said, and I quote again, I offered to resign last night, and President Trump said, let's talk about it tomorrow, unquote. Here's a picture of Bolton's resignation letter, which goes against the claims made by Trump of firing him. The 70-year-old Bolton, who took up the post in April last year, had often been at odds with Foreign Minister Mike Pompeo, who is a Trump loyalist. Now, addressing a press briefing with the U.S. Finance Minister Steven Mnuchin, Pompeo said that Trump is well within his right to choose his own team. For Ambassador Bolton's resignation, as I understand it, it was received this morning. The president's entitled to the staff that he wants. At, at, at any moment. This is a staff person who works directly for the President of the United States, and he, he should have people that he trusts and values and whose uh, efforts and judgments benefit him in delivering American foreign policy. It's what, uh, as Cabinet Member Secretary Mnuchin, I try and do each and every day, and when the President makes a decision like this, he's well within his rights to do so. The sacking of John Bolton comes amid reports of divisions in the Trump cabinet over a canceled peace plan to invite the Taliban to the United States. Bolton was opposed to the idea of talking to the Taliban. Now, Trump's policy drew criticism, especially because of its timing, coming as it did so close to the anniversary of the 11th of September 2001 attacks by al-Qaeda. Bolton had served as Trump's top national security aide since April 2018. And Bolton was Trump's third national security advisor after Michael Flynn and H.R. McMaster. Bolton's departure sounds like good news for North Korea, which had denounced him as a war maniac over his attempts to stop Pyongyang's nuclear program. U.S. officials said that Bolton was responsible for the collapse of the Trump-Kim summit, the second summit in Vietnam. Now, Bolton's departure could help U.S. efforts to revive the talks with North Korea.
Well, there are a whole host of policy disagreements between Ambassador Bolton and the President, and Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, and others in, in the administration. He was a skeptic about everything from talks with North Korea, um, recently talks, the potential for talks with Iran, as well as uh, talks with the Taliban. Uh, that was sort of, he, he was a, a, a hawk on a lot of those issues and wanted the President to adopt a much tougher stance. Um, and was it uh, the Iran uh, t uh, conversations of the last couple of days or the Taliban talks falling apart over the weekend? It's not precisely, precisely clear which one of them was the, sort of the straw that broke the camel's back there, but there's really no love lost by the end between the president and his national security advisor, and those disagreements really did come to a head over the last couple of days. Iran also has reasons to cheer this departure, as Bolton had spearheaded Trump's policy against Iran. Now, this includes the U.S. abandonment of a 2015 international nuclear deal with Tehran and reimposition of the U.S. sanctions. His departure could now lead to a softer policy on Iran. We know Ambassador Bolton and the President disagreed on was whether the President should even contemplate sitting down with the Iranian President Rouhani at the UNGA in a couple of weeks. Um, now that he is out, that's sort of one big obstacle uh, removed from the potential for that meeting. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo saying today he says is sure that it was possible that something like that could happen, um, but that the U.S. wouldn't remove any sanctions. So that's certainly something that will be following a lot more, more closely now that Bolton's out the door.